And now for something completely different. Hey guys, today is my 50th birthday. So in this video, I'm going to do something I have resisted doing for more than a decade. I'm going to tell you who I am. And I'm going to give you at least 10 life lessons I have learned over the past few decades walking around on this planet. All right, I'm gonna start out with my kindergarten report card. Yes, this is my actual kindergarten report card. This is where I find the first important life lesson. Inside, you will see my grades. You know, most of these grades are satisfactory. And you know, what do they really grade you with uh, in kindergarten? Safety rules, resting quietly, using your handkerchief properly. But I was not satisfactory and needed improvement in two areas. First, taking part in informal conversation. Second, listening to directions. The lesson here is understand your own unique personality because my personality was set in this early age when I was in kindergarten. It was already there. It was already formed. I am an introvert and I don't take directions well. I tend to keep to myself and do my own thing. And I always have going back to kindergarten. It's in my DNA. Whatever your unique DNA is, you need to pursue activities that will reflect your own unique personality, your strengths and your limitations. For me, making content on the internet is kind of a natural activity, believe it or not. I'm doing this by myself. I'm not taking direction from anyone, so it works for me. Now, when I was a kid in high school, I had a kind of a rebellious streak, and I was the kind of student who would sit in math class and read a science fiction novel. I guess I got bored in class. I just didn't really want to participate in the system. I didn't want to follow directions. When I was a senior in high school, my work ethic was so poor and I was such a poor student that my fellow classmates voted me biggest slacker. At the time, I was kind of proud of this, if you want to know the truth. But looking back, I'm not proud that I was considered a slacker. I was a bit of a class clown in school. I loved to tell jokes before the class and make everybody laugh. And as you might have guessed, I still enjoy doing that. What I really took from my school experience were friendships. I made a number of great friendships when I was in high school, and I am still friends with those guys today. I still go camping with those guys every year. I still travel with those guys. And when I socialize online, I'm playing video games with those guys. A lesson here about friendships, you need to value your friendships that you make throughout life, but I think especially early on in life. We often think about compound interest with regards to financial investments. Think about compound interest with regards to your relationships. In other words, when you have formed a friendship early on in life and you're able to maintain that friendship over time, you sort of get the benefit of all those years of knowing that other person. And I think those friendships that I formed early in life have been a great blessing to me and have really helped me throughout my life. For the next life lesson, I'm gonna do something I'll bet no one has ever done to you before. I'm gonna show you my actual college transcript. I went from being a really terrible student in high school. I completely changed my habits and my behavior. I took a little bit of everything. In addition to music appreciation, aerobic dance, basic painting, and of course, the psychological aspects of sexual behavior, one of my favorite classes, I might add. <laughs> I took chemistry, I took physics, I took biology, I took Russian, and I want to point out for the record, I never took a class called anal. This is anal geom and calculus one. That's analytical geometry, not anal, okay? So Office of Academic Records, maybe uh, rethink that abbreviation for that class, please. But the life lesson here in my college GPA, you can change your habits. 
I went from being the biggest slacker in my class to being a pretty good student in college, a very diligent student who was goal-oriented and motivated. I've been with friends over the years who have been heavy smokers, and they have made the internal decision to quit smoking, and they quit. They changed, and they never smoked a cigarette again. Probably my favorite achievement in college is not on this transcript, and I've talked about it many times on the internet before, and it was the summer that I worked in Yellowstone Park. That summer in Yellowstone when I was in college was one of the most influential summers of my life. It taught me something about what it would take to make me happy. The end goal of life is to be happy. So what did I learn working in Yellowstone? Well, I was working in the kitchen, not a glamorous job. I was making almost no money. I mean, very little money, probably 100 bucks a week or something like that. But I was so happy just living in Yellowstone. I always knew that if nothing else in my life worked out, I could circle back, go to Yellowstone, and I would be happy. And if you're happy, you're winning the game. The lesson that I drew from that time in Yellowstone is to find joy in nature and in simplicity. Money is wonderful, but you don't really need money necessarily to be happy. Because I was super happy that summer and I really didn't have much money to speak of at all. So after graduating college, we get to my next life lesson. It's important to have goals and it's important to work to achieve goals. But there are times in life when I think maybe you need to pursue spiritual goals as well as material goals. I did something really different and I went to volunteer in Czechoslovakia and I spent the uh, next nine months or so teaching English to a number of really young school children from third grade up to eighth grade in what's called a Zakladna Škola. I was living in Bratislava, Czechoslovakia, and I was there when Czechoslovakia was still a unified country. And so I was actually there on New Year's Eve when Czechoslovakia split in two, like formally split in two. In fact, this National Geographic came out in September of 93, and it has a huge story about Czechoslovakia. Well, if you look inside the front page of the story, you see a picture of jubilant Slovaks dancing in the streets of Bratislava right after the country had split. Well, that's me. So, and that's my friend Meredith. <laughs> this was New Year's Eve in Bratislava, Czechoslovakia which suddenly became Slovakia on New Year's Day. And we went down to the big town square and had a blast. Still one of the best New Year's Eves I've ever had. But the lesson I drew from teaching English in Czechoslovakia was don't rush through life. I never regretted taking that time to go volunteer overseas. I had never learned more about the United States than when I went over to Eastern Europe. You know, I never learned more about capitalism until I experienced socialism slash communism. And yes, this was right after the fall of the Berlin Wall. Very few things had really changed that much at this period of time in Slovakia. I used to go down to the local Potrovini, which was a grocery store, and I would have to wait in line on the street just to get inside the store I was making about $120 a month. Once again, my happiness was certainly not dependent upon money, but you know, in those days you could get a tall glass of Slovak beer in a brew pub for about 35 cents. So even at $120 a month, the money really went a long way over there in Eastern Europe and Central Europe at that time. And I took advantage of my time there to visit a lot of those countries. And I think at that moment, I decided that I wanted my long-term career to have something to do with travel. But sadly, I got accepted to law school. I went to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill School of Law. Here's our little Faces and Places book uh, from when I was in law school. This was the Facebook of the time, literally. <laughs> Certainly, North Carolina is a fantastic law school. In my opinion, it was you know, one of the best 
public law schools in the country. I wanted to go to a public law school so I wouldn't come out in a lot of debt. I have to say, my time in law school was mostly an unhappy time. I did not enjoy being in law school. It's nothing against Carolina. I loved Chapel Hill. I had a number of wonderful classmates, but my soul was not happy. And you guessed it, that gets me to the next life lesson that is critical. Follow your bliss. If you find yourself on a path in life that is making you unhappy, change the path. You really can change if you want to. You can change your entire career. You can move anywhere you want to move. You can do something different. So like when I was in law school, I was constantly trying to figure out how to tunnel out of that prison. And so now I'm circling back to those friends of mine that I went to high school with. I actually put together a business plan with two of my best buddies from high school and we pitched the plan to AOL. What am I talking about here? Well, here is the business plan that we came up with. This is circa 1995. Do you remember AOL? <laughs> AOL basically was the internet in those days, along with CompuServe and Prodigy. My friends and I put together a business plan for a company called Hecklers Online, and we were gonna be the first comedy channel, basically, on the internet. And guess what, AOL liked our pitch. They said yes. They agreed to help finance Hecklers Online and get us up and running. And so myself and Mike and Scott, you know, two of my best buddies from high school, we started this business on AOL in 1995. Now I wanna paint a picture for you of what the internet was like in 1995. This was before you could even do video on the internet. Having a photo on the internet was kind of a big deal. Our mission was to be as funny as possible given the constraints now, the way AOL positioned Hecklers Online, we were sort of the first, I hate to say this, celebrities of cyberspace. We never really viewed ourselves that way. Although we did call ourselves the three wise guys, we were kind of the party hosts. Hecklers was basically the first social media on the internet. So not only were we creating the first original content for the internet, we also created the first social media because Hecklers Online was interactive. It wasn't just about our sense of humor, it was really about the audience's sense of humor. So we would, for example, have a daily top 10 list and we would invite the audience to submit the jokes and we would select the 10 funniest jokes to go in our daily list. Hecklers Online was a massive hit. It was consistently one of the highest rated areas on AOL. And because Hecklers was such a success, we ended up launching additional areas. If you played video games in the 90s and were on AOL, you probably saw our stuff. We had an area called Antagonist Games Network, or Ant for short. And Ant was a massive hit, even bigger than Hecklers. And by the way, for you ants out there, I was Ant Stoic. So if you're familiar with the Ant Army, General Stoic was my alter ego. But I cannot possibly express all of the different experiences that we had doing Hecklers Online for several years. It was like having an entire career compressed into about a five to six year span of time. We had a deal with Hallmark, we actually had a line of original Hallmark cards. So I appeared in a bunch of Hallmark cards. We also had a deal with Playboy. Now, how many people do you know who have simultaneously done business with Hallmark and Playboy? We used to have parties at the Playboy Mansion. We actually were the first ones to bring Playboy to Mardi Gras in New Orleans. We, and that was about 20 years ago. This is an artifact from those days. And you'll see it says, Playboy Mardi Gras, New Orleans, 1999. And you gotta understand, I was a young single guy in my 20s. It's probably not gonna get much better than that as a single guy, <laughs> being with Playboy in New Orleans for the millennial Mardi Gras. But we did have events from time to time at the Playboy Mansion. 
You know, I'll never forget the first time we met Hef. To get into the Playboy Mansion, you had to pull up to this rock and literally talk to the rock. You would tell the rock your name and that you were there for the party or whatever, and these people inside the mansion would decide if you had access or not. Heckler's was such a big success at that time, and we had you know, just ink this deal with Playboy. I remember pulling up to The Rock and hearing all these excited shouts of glee inside <laughs> and the gates swung open and we went in the Playboy Mansion. And I know that this probably is a bit of a shock or surprise to some of you out there, but I gotta say, it's not nearly as edgy as it might seem. I actually brought my mother and sister to the Playboy Mansion one time. Our deal with Playboy, you have to understand, is because we created content that young males liked. We had video games, we had jokes, and we had science fiction, and so it was a natural fit with Playboy. Somebody's gotta write the articles, right? Every time we dealt with Hef, he was always a lot of fun to be around, he was great, and you know we appreciated our time with Playboy just as we appreciated our time working with Hallmark, okay? <laughs> Hallmark cards, Playboy Mansion, somehow it all just worked. You know, people often ask me, how can I make money? At this period of time in my life, I was playing video games. I was going to parties at the Playboy Mansion. I was telling jokes. So there are a lot of ways in the world to make money. I don't know if that's a lesson or not. There were so many great experiences during the Heckler's years. Someday this story will be properly told. This is just a tiny little snippet of it. I previously stated that you need to follow your bliss, do what makes you happy. You also in life, I think, need to take calculated risks. And coming from law school, see, it's not really a lawyerly way to think because all lawyers are very risk averse. Most entrepreneurs, by contrast, are willing to take risks, especially calculated risk. So it was a big risk for me to drop out of law school and start something like Heckler's. I remember talking to a lady in 1995 and telling her that I was dropping out of one of the top law schools in the country to start Heckler's Online. Her reply was, your parents are letting you do that? You know, the very first press release that came out about Hecklers Online said that we were going to try to be the Milton Burles of cyberspace. You remember Milton Burle was kind of the, the first comedy star of television. And looking back, we really did sort of pull it off. I know that most of you out there don't have a memory of hecklers, and a lot of that is because it was sort of within the walled garden of AOL. The web was just beginning to gain traction. So I think one of these days, the hecklers story should be told properly, and hopefully that day will come soon. <clears throat> is, is this thing on? Is it on? All right, then. Honey, um, my name is Cordelia Jackson. That's C-O-R-D-E-L-I-A, Cordelia. And if you must know, I am 77 years old. And yes, I am dead. So what happened after Hecklers? I enrolled in a school called New York Film Academy. You may have heard of it. They have campuses not only in New York, but also in Los Angeles and in other big cities around the world. And at New York Film Academy, I kind of learned the basics of making a film. And I took classes both in New York City and also in LA and was able to shoot at the back lot of Universal Studios. That was a fantastic life experience. My lesson from New York Film Academy and from teaching myself filmmaking is never stop learning. I don't care how old you are, I don't care what you've done previously in your life, I don't care what your degree might be in, if you are passionate about something, there has never been a better time to be self-motivated and teach yourself because you have more resources today than ever before. You know, if you are on the internet, you have better access to information than the President of the United States had 20, 25 years ago. You could teach yourself literally just about anything with a combination of web information and YouTube videos and so forth.
My name is Sean Michael. I'm a writer, filmmaker, and the self-appointed director of Walkabout Production Group. I'm usually pretty easy to spot in a campground because I'm the guy holding this. So in uh, 2006, I signed up for this new service called YouTube and in 2007 started a channel. And again, this goes all the way back really to that first trip to Yellowstone. I always wanted to circle back there. And I think through Long Long Honeymoon, I was able for a certain amount of time every year. My lesson from Long Long Honeymoon is to help others with what you do. What you put out in the world really will eventually come back to you. One way that I can really reach and affect a lot of people in a positive way is to create these internet videos. The more I can help you, the better off I am. So it's really a virtuous circle. Long Long Honeymoon has been a lot of fun to do over the years. It's really kind of a natural progression from what I did in the 90s with Hecklers Online and Ant. And we've had so many wonderful experiences with Long Long Honeymoon. And now we've reached my final life lesson in this somewhat unusual rambling birthday post. Learn from the past, but don't live in the past. I have really enjoyed reflecting on a lot of these experiences and memories from the past 50 years. Now that I'm on the other side of that milestone birthday, I'm not slowing down. If anything, I'm going to speed up and hopefully have another series of great experiences ahead of me. I've shown you a lot of things about my life that are mostly positive, really, because what's the point of dredging up a bunch of negative energy on a day like today? I've made a lot of mistakes in life. I've had a lot of flops. I've really had a lot of things that I've done that haven't worked. In this video, I'm showing you some happy things mostly that have happened in my life, with the notable exception of law school. <laughs> And that's the way it should be for a video of this type, I think. Finally, I want to tell you a little bit about my family. My mother is a retired teacher and counselor. My father uh, was a businessman, and he sort of has had a second career as a truck driver. So all you truck drivers out there who like to comment on our videos, I have an expert consultant who will tell me all about the truck driving business. If we have a tire blowout, he's the first guy that I'm calling. My sister is a doctor, and my brother is the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company. So not a bad job, mom and dad. I guess I'm sort of the black sheep of the family. Sorry, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I mean, really, if we don't tell our own stories, nobody's going to tell them for us. So this was a little taste of my story. Maybe in the future we'll do some more videos like this. I think it's kind of fun just to sit down and speak to you directly from the heart. You know, everybody wants to make an impact in life. I think when you reach the end of your life, and hopefully I'm not near the end, but you want to be able to look back and think that you made a difference in some way, you made some kind of positive impact on other people. So really, that's what I want our channel to do for you. I want it to help you get out there and make your own experiences, have your own adventures, when you're telling your story, you're going to have all sorts of cool stories to tell. All right, guys, as always, thank you for tuning in. I promise we will soon return to our regularly scheduled programming, our usual stuff. This was just a little bit of fun. Until next time, I am Sean. This is Long Long Honeymoon, where we say lo lo ho.